Data science was once considered the sexiest job of the 21st century. I've been working as a data scientist in the US tech industry for over 10 years now. I've worked at big tech names like Meta, Cisco, and Wells Fargo. And based on a decade of experience and what I've been seeing recently, let me tell you the ugly truth about becoming a data scientist in 2025, which not a lot of people are talking about. So the playbook for becoming a data scientist is actually changed a lot. There have been many videos circulating on YouTube where people are sharing that they have applied to 5,000 plus job applications and still got no interviews, no responses. And I personally know a lot of people who had complained that they have applied to 500 jobs, 1,000 jobs, but still not getting any responses. It is estimated that the tech jobs are getting two to three times more applications today as they used to get in 2021. And the reason people are getting such a hard time is that the fundamental playbook for becoming a data scientist has changed significantly. The old path usually used to be that you acquire some skills. It could be Python, Pandas, SQL, etc. Then you go on Kaggle and then you play around with some data sets there. You build some portfolio projects which you put in your resume and then you apply for, let's say, about 100 jobs. Usually when you apply for 100 jobs with these, you would get five to six interview schedule and out of that, you usually get one job and that is all you need. But that old path for becoming a data scientist is not working anymore. And the main reason is, one, there is a lot of competition. So when the hiring managers get hundreds, sometimes thousands of applications for a job, they can be selective in terms of who they want to select. The other thing is that this skills thing, when you learn a little bit of Pandas and SQL and Python, and then when you start applying, most of these technical tasks AI is pretty good at doing. So companies are not necessarily looking for people who are a little bit good in these skills and then can demonstrate using some Kaggle project. They want specialists who can help them solve the actual problem they are trying to solve in the business. So the 2020s playbook was very simple. You get some general data science skills, you build some Kaggle projects, and then you apply everywhere. Now, that approach doesn't work now. The modern playbook of 2025 is quite the opposite of it. You develop specialized skills. You build specific niche projects, which are actually based on some real-world data. And then you have a very targeted outreach to only companies and teams which are relevant to the specific niche based around which you have developed the skills and you have created your project. As I said, if you are applying for a data science job, especially a junior or entry-level position, you are facing a great competition. There are hundreds or even thousands of applicants who are competing against you to get the same job which you are applying for. And this is what I call a great filter because out of, let's say, if there are 500 applications, only about five people will be called for the interview. So that is 1%. Only 1% of the people who apply will be called for the interview. And this is the kind of competition you're facing. And this is a big filter through which you have to penetrate if you want to successfully land a data science job. And the worst part is that each hiring manager or recruiter, they on average spend about four to five seconds scanning your resume. And you just have that window to impress them enough that they spend more time on your resume, on your projects, and actually invite you for the interview. And since AI can automate a lot of manual tasks like knowing some basic SQL and Pandas and Python and having some knowledge about different frameworks and libraries. Hiring managers nowadays are not very much obsessing about the knowledge of those skills because they know that, that if a good person comes into the team and even if they have no idea about any other library or framework, they can always look it up. They can always leverage the help of AI and successfully utilize the framework and AI they want to use. So if that is not the problem, then what is the problem? So if having that technical knowledge is not the differentiator, if that is not clear enough value, then what kind of value are hiring managers looking for? They are looking for your 
ability to provide business impact and having specialized knowledge around the kind of business problem they're trying to solve, the kind of technical methodologies they are using, etc. So when you are applying, you have to be extremely specific on what kind of data science roles you're applying for. And based on that, you should backtrack and build some impressive portfolio projects. Even before COVID, when the generic data scientists were pretty cool, I remember we were working on a project where we were trying to determine that in a B2B world, what causes customer to churn? Now, this was a problem related to causal inference. So it requires some specific expertise and skill set. And I remember we got hundreds of applications, even back then, I'm talking about the year about 2018, 2019. And when we were looking for specific kind of experience in the candidate, only three candidates had the kind of experience we were looking for. And of course, these were the three people who were invited for the interviews. But now that importance of niching down and getting specific is even more pronounced because if previously on an average job posting, there would be 100 applicants, now there are 1000. So you just cannot land an interview by being 5 to 10% better than others in terms of how you put in your resume, based on how good your resume looks and what kind of ATS friendly keywords it has. You have to totally stand out from the crowd by telling the hiring managers and the recruiters a story that the specific kind of project you're trying to solve, I am bringing in some experience, if not from the jobs, then from my portfolio projects, which assures them that you can be a good fit for their team. And when you are crafting your resume, you have to look at the signal to noise ratio. A lot of things which you mentioned in your resume could be noise and you have to make sure that you have the maximum amount of signal in your resume and it is easy to find especially in the first glance at within five to seven seconds. So what constitutes noise in a resume? Well that includes your generic resume bullet points like I know Python and I know pandas and I know this thing and I know that thing because Pretty much all the applicants who are applying for that role at least are claiming to know that skill set. So I do think that adds a lot of value. Then are your Coursera and your Udemy certifications. Again, I think that's just noise. That is just a filler because anyone can watch that video at 2x speed and get that certification. So it's pretty much useless. And then you have your Kaggle, Titanic or Iris datasets, etc. All of that is, I believe, just noise. So what is Signal? I think that is your niche specific project. That is the biggest thing. And then your ability to provide business impact. And how do you demonstrate that in your resume? By showing that what was the business significance of whatever technical thing you built. So in this specialization age, the playbook for getting a data science job in 2025 and beyond is this three-step framework. The first step is that you pick a niche where you would start developing your expertise and then you would start building your spike project there. And then based on that, you would also be doing targeted outreach. Now you can pick this domain based on your interest, based on your prior experience, based on any kind of mentor you have available who could guide you from that field because that person does not have to be a data scientist in that domain. It could be your parent, a friend who's working in banking, retail, e-commerce, healthcare, any field and then you can start asking them questions so that you could create this spike project around that then you would start doing targeting outreach with that special expertise a very fascinating statistic to know is that specialist jobs get 40 percent less applicants so if the job title for example says junior data scientist it will get a lot more applications but if it says healthcare data scientist if it says e-commerce churn data scientist, then it will get very few applications because there are just a lot of people who are targeting to mass kind of generic jobs. But if you develop your expertise around a specific niche and then start applying for just those jobs, then admittedly, the number of such jobs would be smaller, but there will be lesser applicants and your odds of standing against the competitors would be much, much better. So one thing which I teach pretty religiously nowadays is to become a T-shaped data scientist. And this is what it looks like. There is this long horizontal bar and this includes your SQL expertise, your Python expertise and all other things you need to know to become a data scientist. You should have some depth there, but not a whole lot. And then you pick one thing where you go very, very, very deep into that expertise. And this is your specialization. 
It could be that you have very good expertise in healthcare domain and even within healthcare, a specific kind of healthcare problem. It could be that you are a very good NLP expert. It's, it's possible that you become a very good Gen AI expert who is very good, who is excellent at solving text to SQL problems. But whatever your niche is, pick one and then go deep. Because that is pretty much the only way I'm seeing to become a successful data scientist in today's job market and beyond. Now, to quickly demonstrate or give an example of what I'm talking about, this is a person I was mentoring. She was working as a marketing analyst and wanted to become a data scientist. So I was mentoring her with that transition. So before that, she had some Kaggle generic projects and she had applied to hundreds of jobs without getting any responses back. And then we brainstormed together to come up with some niche which was relevant with her prior experience of marketing and then we settled on creating a portfolio project which was related to customer segmentation and ltv prediction and she created the outline for that project we found a very good real but publicly available data set and then she created a one-page document around that and then as a next step she started sharing that one-page document with different people with different marketing analytics managers on LinkedIn. And within three to four weeks, she started getting some interview calls. And a couple of weeks after, she landed her first job as a data scientist. Now, had she stuck with her previous approach of having a generic resume, generic portfolio projects, and just applying to all kind of generic data science jobs, then I'm pretty sure that she would have been struggling to land the job even today. So the two main problems which I'm seeing a lot of aspiring data scientists making is that one, they have this Kaggle man mindset. It used to work. Kaggle is a great place. I've spent a lot of time there, but it used to work that you just go there, you find a data set and that you create some solution out of that. But now when AI is there, where you can just provide some data set and as long as it doesn't have a lot of problems, it can write the code and do the prediction as well as analysis. Now you have to pick a niche and then within that you have to find a messy business problem, which is actually real. And then you have to solve for it because problem solving is the new thing which will help you differentiate against the competitors who are just claiming that they know PyTorch and Scikit-Learn and PySpark, etc. The second thing is that don't become a tool collector. It is very tempting to just go and look at what kind of skill sets are mentioned for different data science jobs and then start learning one after another. And since there are a lot of tools for you to learn and when you start learning them and when you start practicing them, it's very easy for you to get lost into that endless loop of knowing different tools. Much better approach is that you master the stack which is relevant to your niche. So you pick a niche, for example, even if you want to say that I want to become a sentiment analysis NLP master, then pick that niche and then see what are the tools which are relevant to that niche and then start using them and become an expert at that. So to leave you with some concrete action plan, this is what you can do in the next seven days. First, find your niche. Again, it can be based on your interest, based on any area of business which you are aware of, which you have passion for, or which any one of your friend or family member is aware of. So based on that, pick a niche and then find what is a good spike project you can create within that. Again, it has to be based on real data. The data should be messy and you should solve some actual real world problem. Because if the data is real and you are able to find some useful, meaningful insight out of that. It could be cost reduction, it could be profit increase, it could be anything. And then that becomes a business impact. And when you put that on your resume, it definitely stands out against, I know this tool and, and that tool. And then the third step is that you create a one-page document and then you identify what could be some managers in the field of the niche where you have created that one page document for and then start sharing with them provide them some value provide them some insights which you have found before you ask anything in return and you would be surprised at how many people when you reach out with something which is inspiring which is useful which is concrete there are a lot of people who are willing to have a conversation with you and with that kind of networking you would again learn much more about the niche which you have developed and based on that maybe you can create some more projects and the best case scenario would be that you would find out there is a job which you can apply for and you would be a very good fit for that and if you want a very to the point concrete roadmap document on what you can learn to get started with these portfolio projects then in the description below you'll find a link to a free roadmap guide you can just download it and follow along i hope you like the content of this video thank you so much for watching